welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Josh. Hi. And uh, today we're gonna do a basic overview of FPV. A lot of stuff has changed with FPV oh over the past five years. A lot has stayed the same, a lot has changed, but the technology, it's amazing. It's just gotten better. Yeah, cheaper too. It's gotten cheaper, there's better antennas out there. Yeah, the technology, the mainstream, also the, the amount of channels, amount yeah. of planes you can put in the air at the same time. There's even HD downlink that you can get now. Right. So what we wanted to do is just give you guys a basic overview. And a matter of fact, that was a YouTube request by um, Periodic Table of Videos. And he didn't even believe it was the real you that there he was, was talking a, to. There was a whole forum thread saying it wasn't me. We do actually respond to our videos. I guess I gotta get a, a profile picture of me. It does help. On the things, a lot of people know it's really me, but yeah. guess what it is. Are you really you? I, I hope so. We'll never know. So you know what, this is going to be basically a 10 minute overview. There's going to be a lot of technology we're not going to cover in depth, but we've also done previous videos that we'll link down below, and there's a lot of other really great minds. But we really want to just help you understand what you need to get into to get started with FPV. Right. And also understanding what's out there. So let's talk about the setup. Yeah. they are going to need a camera. Camera is really important. You can't do much without a camera. Right. You need a transmitter and a receiver. Yep. To and transmit and to receive. Well, you got to have the camera transmitting to the receiver. Correct. Your image. Yeah, that's very good, Josh. And speaking of your image, you need something to see it on, don't you? Yes. You need some goggles or a monitor if Or a monitor. Kind. Yeah. Uh, antenna. Antenna is really important, too. Antennas. You know what? I think some of the greatest technology jumps have been in antennas in the past couple of years. Yeah. It's amazing what you can get out of them. And also, with there being more frequencies out there, mm -hmm. the antenna is even more important than ever. Now, we recommend, for simplicity's sake, that you yeah. go plug and play for your first setup. Oh, plug and play is so important. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, with uh, the growth of the industry, uh, the cameras and the receivers, they're all interchangeable, but connectors. They mm -hmm. haven't really been solidified. Uh, two companies we really like is Immersion RC and Lumineer. Right. They have done amazing things in the industry to make everything plug and play, but also their cameras, their video transmitters, they work on multiple voltages, and that's really important. So would you say it's a good idea to stick with a certain brand? Oh, once you find out what you like? Super important. Okay. A matter of fact, and I'd also find out what friends you have in the area, if anyone's into FPV, find out what brand they're using because most likely they'll know that the best and fly that brand with them. And that way, if you're getting new into it, you'll get the most support possible from a friend. Now, as a great man, spider man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. Now, more power doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. No, no. Actually, more power can actually hurt you. Yes. Uh, with FPV, a lot of people always assume the stronger the signal they get, the better the experience they're going to get. Mm -hmm. But it's actually sometimes the exact opposite. A better antenna with a lower power system can sometimes give you better, cleaner performance. Okay. So antennas matched up with the right transmitter, matched up with the right camera is really your key to success. Okay. That's what's going to be giving you the signal and give you the best opportunity to receive a nice, good, strong signal. Especially if you're flying indoors, right? Indoors, like yeah. a metal structure. There's been times when we've actually flown like at Hercules plant where we've gone through and we had systems that were 600 milliwatt systems. Yeah. And the multipath interference, even though we were using helical antennas, and we'll talk about that in a second, it was still bouncing all over the place, coming back, we had terrible static. When we were flying these minis off of a 200 milliwatt system, we had a horrible problem with it as well too. Um, flying a 25 milliwatt system with a helical antenna actually gives you the best performance indoors because the power is not so great that the signal doesn't bounce off the metal fixtures and then come back and hit you. Okay. It's weak enough when it comes back, you don't really notice gotcha. it. Gotcha. So a lot of times also with uh, multi-copter racing and racing leaks for both wings and uh, multi-rotors, they'll even limit the power between 200 and 250. They won't even let 600 out of the door. Okay. One thing I really absolutely love, and it's legal to operate and fly almost anywhere, is these little 25 milliwatt all-in-one systems. A lot of people think they're not going to get very far with them, mm -hmm. but we have 10 acres in the backyard, and we can fly that whole 10 acres and have a really good experience, even flying through the woods. Cool. So this is an all-in-one. You have your helical antenna, 25 milliwatt system, and a decent little 600 TV line board camera that all operates off of the same voltage that you go out of your receiver with. Okay. So do, you need, do you need a ham license? You don't need a ham license for that. Okay. Technically, anytime you go above 100 milliwatt, you're going to need a ham license to legally operate that system. And it's not hard to get. It's it's something you can you can do. Yeah. But it's to be legal, you know, we don't want people being illegal. I strongly recommend doing that. Cool. So we kind of touched on antennas. Yes. They're super important here. Those Most are of, these. Those are these. As a matter of fact, in some of these too, and some of them have seen better days. Uh, a lot of times when you buy a transmitter, you'll get something that looks like this. And it works, and if you're flying and learning off of a multi-rotor, and you're flying alone in a clean open area, not rolling upside down or banking too tight, you're going to get pretty good performance out of this. But what happens is this sends out, this is called a linear antenna, it sends out its signals like razor blades. Right. And as long as you have something in the same orientation to receive it, you're getting really good data. 
problem is, is when these guys go out and they hit a wall or hit a structure and they come back, mm -hmm. they cause something called multi-path interference. Okay. Long story short, you start seeing double, colors get really weird. It's not a good thing. And also, if you're flying an airplane or a multi-rotor and you're doing flips and rolls, you turn this 90 degrees, that image data visually is doing this to your antenna and you're getting only a smittance of what you had before. A smittance? A smittance. Omnidirectionals work differently. And a matter of fact, this one's busted open. You can kind of see what it looks like and also along here. Mm -hmm. We really flatten the sucker out. Now this sends more of like a spiral yep. signal. This is a clover leaf antenna. It sends out a spiral signal. It looks like a donut as okay. far as the way it receives. The only dead zone is right out the tip here. Okay. And we have more videos on how antennas work here that we'll link down to below. But long story short, you can fly all around yourself with this. And if you look, it kind of looks like a drill bit going through the air, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This actually sends the signal out in a rotating fashion. Now, you want to make sure that if you have a right-hand polarized antenna, which this is, that you match it with a right-hand polarized antenna. Okay. If you go right to left, they're actually going to cancel each other out, and you'll get a little bit of an image, but it'll be really muddy, and it won't work very well. Right. The reason they have left-hand and right-hand is so when you have all these different channels that we'll talk about shortly, you can actually stack people closer together, have right and left-hand orientations, and fly more machines at the same time. It's kind of like a handshake. Yeah, you're right. You know, if you both go with right hand, it all works out. If somebody, one person does right, the other, it's awkward. So weird. They cancel each other out. That is beautiful. You man. will never talk to him again. <laughs> and oftentimes, if you go ahead and you match up your antennas properly, uh, one thing could be for range. So you'd be using a patch antenna with another type of antenna that would receive that patch antenna well. Okay. Um, you know, there's different antennas for different functionalities. I'd really strongly encourage people when they're getting into this, don't plan on flying miles out. First of all, it's not legal, and you can have so much fun in your backyard under 400 feet. One of the last things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to with antennas is there's two different types of connectors. There's an RP SMA, which stands for Reverse Polarized SMA Connector, and there's also SMA. Our favorite that we sell at our store and that we really like is SMA. So we always try to stay with SMA. Whatever one you pick, just make sure you stay with it. Whenever you're selecting an antenna, be very sensitive about the connectors it comes with because you could get the wrong one if you're not careful. SMA. SMA. Now, another great development is there's actually more frequencies to choose from. A lot more frequencies. So the most popular frequency is the 5.8 gigawatts. Gigawatts? Or whatever. Gigahizzes? Gig yeah. Gigahertz. And uh, that opens up, what, uh, four different bands mm -hmm. and upwards of like 30, 32 different, different channels. There's a lot of different channels. So does that mean you can fly 32 planes at the same time? No, what you have is different manufacturers came up with different frequencies that they were really tuned into. Boscam has their own band. Immersion Fat Shark has their own band. Um, other manufacturers have their own band. But ultimately, there's about four main ones, each consisting of eight channels. Doesn't mean you can fly 32 planes, though. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, what it means is you can put more planes in the air and you have the more ability to go on these half channels and these unique channels to get people closer together. So now six people could technically race together nice. and have a really good experience. But it's really important when you're close to each other, you actually, when you're flying, you carry extra sets of antennas. You're flying with a buddy that has a real close channel, swap out your antennas and make sure that you go with the left hand if they have right hand Okay. and vice versa. Cool. Also speaking of antennas, always make sure that on your transmitter side, you never power up your machine without putting your antenna on first or it'll blow it up. Now on the ground, you're gonna need a receiver and a monitor, which basically makes up your ground station. Otherwise, you'll never see what the plane's transmitting. Right, and that comes in a lot of different forms. You have yeah. you have goggles that have everything within, right? Yes. And then uh, you can also have a monitor with a receiver in it, or you could have a separate monitor with a separate receiver. Yeah, you can still go back to the good old days when we built our own. You bought a receiver, you bought a monitor, and you hooked them all together. Or you drag your mom's Vizio out into the backyard. It's always awkward when that happens. All right, so we talked about monitors. Let's talk about goggles. Goggles are the coolest. Yeah, because you can put them on your face. Now, you can get a lot of different size goggles to match your face, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's got a different face. Everyone's a different face. Uh, imagine your face is like your foot. It's everyone's different, and you got to try them on. You like... are ugly. <laughs> No. With the goggles nowadays, there's so many manufacturers out there, and also they have adjustable eyepieces. Uh, you really got to try goggles on like you try a pair of shoes. Oh, okay. You got to try make sure it fits. Also, if you wear glasses, yeah. they have goggles now that go over your glasses. Really? It's real nice. Cool. So a lot of different options out there. A couple things you never want to do with goggles, no matter whether they're cheap or expensive, never turn them in the light. There's a Frenzo lens in there, and when the light goes through that, it'll burn out the LCD display, and you're done. Oh, no. So these goggles are pretty advanced. They actually have a built-in DVR, which means you can actually record your flight while you're flying. Really? And change your settings and everything. Nice. They also oftentimes will output to another monitor, so you can actually wear your goggles and you can tap it into a monitor, and that way people can see what you're experiencing while you're wearing your goggles. That's cool. A lot of really advanced features. And this one even has a fan. Want to guess what the fan's for? That's for, uh, I, I have nothing, no. 
it's for keeping them from fogging up. Oh. It's a hot summer day, it's kind of humid outside, these right. things fog up and that was a big problem. Fat Shark overcame that by putting a little tiny fan in there and actually powering off the balance connector of your LiPo. That's cool. And speaking of uh, power, the Fat Shark goggles also accept different types of power and they also have things like modules that enable people to use head tracking. You remember your head tracking yeah. episode? Mm -hmm. So you can actually still do that to this day. They're even more advanced and have, I think, uh, more uh, access. I think you can only go left, right, up, mm -hmm. and down. I think it even has a rotate for the future. And which, head tracking is when you when you turn your head, it actually turns your onboard camera. Yeah, remember we were at the uh, what is that golf course, mm -hmm. and we were flying the plane around, and you're you're moving them all around. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, the functionality is even better. There's no more drift anymore, uh, but it's really what you want to spend. I'd strongly recommend if you're just getting into the hobby, uh, don't go super cheap on goggles, but read a lot of reviews. Um, there's a couple things you want to make pay attention to. Field of view. The wider the field of view, the more immersive, the more narrow, the more like you're looking into a little monitor through a screen. Right. So if you want a really immersive experience, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more, but also the image is gonna be a little bit fuzzier on the outer corners. Okay. So it's really a payoff on where you wanna go. Uh, read reviews, do your homework, because these are gonna last you for years. Uh, but if you're building your own or picking your own monitor, you gotta make sure of one thing. You don't want blue screen. Okay. You want static. S okay, static. Blue why, why is that? Because blue screen just goes to blue screen well, and nothing else? Basically, with static, when you start flying away, you're gonna get an indicator that you're actually losing some of your image. Okay. If you have blue screen, you can lock out and it takes a lot longer to come back in for uh, you. Okay. So it's really important that you have a monitor that can go to static, not blue screen. Uh, but also with the receivers nowadays, there's a really great function uh, where sometimes you'd have to hunt for your channels and mm -hmm. you couldn't find it. A lot of these receivers nowadays have something called the search function. So it'll find it automatically. It'll go through all the channels and once it picks it up, it'll lock onto that signal. To the best one. Yep, to the best one. Sometimes you'll lock into your buddies, uh, but it still gives you a better opportunity to be able to find your channel. Uh, also, there's something called diversity, and diversity was a really rare, complicated thing in the past, but now, in these simple little monitors, I love this. This is a little Ishii monitor. I really hope to see these someday with a flight test logo on them carried in our store. Sweet. They work fantastic. But it actually has two built-in receivers, and it's always analyzing the signal. And whatever signal is the best, it jumps to that antenna. Okay. So ideally, if you're going for basically flying all over your head, and then you want to go for range, you could have a patch antenna on one, which mm -hmm. would give you your distance, and then you could have an omnidirectional cloverleaf on the other, which would let you fly all around. Cool. So when you fly behind you, the patch antenna is the worst thing you want. But when you fly far away, you wouldn't want this uh, helical um, cloverleaf. Right. So you can use that to your benefit, and it'll always assess the best signal and work for you. Nice. Now with the receivers, just like we talked about with the video transmitters and the cameras, finding receivers that can work off of a wise voltage band will just protect your investment and that way you can operate it from many different voltage power sources. Okay. Um, also, if you have a receiver that can only recept five channels, you're only ever going to be able to dial into five channels even if your transmitter can dial into more. Okay. So you want to find a receiver that can accept every bit as many channels as your transmitter and match those. Right. Once again, it goes back to sticking with if you want to go Fat Shark or Immersion, stay Fat Shark Immersion. If you want to go Lumineer, stay a Lumineer. Uh, pick a brand and stay with it. Once a Fat Shark guy, always a Fat Shark guy. Now this technology changes all the time, changes really, really yeah. fast. And a lot of the stuff that we share today is based off of our opinion. Yeah. So the best thing to do is to find people that are flying FPV around you, ask them questions. Yeah, reach out into the forums, ask people's opinions. Everyone has an opinion about FPV and the best way to get into it. Build some friendships over this. Flying alone is not fun. Yeah. Find some friends, fly with them, learn from them, make a memory. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.